Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we will discuss about the cholinergic antagonist, the agents, uh, which are the two agents of the cholinergic antagonist, that is the ganglionic blockers and the neuromuscular blocking agents. I have discussed about the about the antimuscarinic agents in my previous video and the all the drugs related to the antimuscarinic agents now let's get started with the ganglionic blockers so one we will which we will discuss is the nicotine that is the most important that is the main content of the cigarette smoke this is the Depending on the dose, nicotine depolarizes the autonomic ganglia, resulting first in stimulation and then paralysis of all ganglia. The stimulatory effects are complex, results from increased release of the neurotransmitters to increase the dopamine, serotonin, nor epinephrine, just mentioning a few. So for the nicotine, they act on the nicotinic receptors of both sympathetic uh, nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system stimulates and then these are known as the cholinergic and agonist because first they stimulate and then block the receptor for example if they stimulate the central nervous system at high dose it will cause convulsions and then eventually it will lead to paralysis that is the depression of the central nervous system it can also cause the increase in the blood pressure increase in heart rate but at a higher dose it can eventually cause decrease in the blood pressure in GIT it causes increase in motility nausea and vomiting so this was all about the ganglionic blockers I tried to make it as as uh, you know brief as possible because it was just like I wanted to summarize the ganglionic blockers now same like this i will summarize the neuromuscular blocking agents so for the neuromuscular blockers they block the cholinergic transmission at the nicotinic receptor on the skeletal muscle they are either antagonists which are non depolarizing or the agonists which are the depolarizing now for neuromuscular blockers their uh, function is similar to the acetylcholine here you can see that the neuromuscular blockers are this i have already discussed that it facilitates intubation especially the endotracheal intubation which provides the complete muscle relaxation at low anesthetic dose during surgery it also is it is also used in the intensive care unit to facilitate mechanical ventilation in chronically ill patients and rapid intubation due to respiratory Failure. Now, you know, muscular blockers are of two types, the non-depolarizing agents and the depolarizing agent. First, in order to understand about the neuromuscular blockers, we need to understand the uh, phases or the, we need to review the process of the muscular contraction. If you remember here, this is the post presynaptic membrane. This is here we have the postsynaptic, in between we have the synaptic cleft. What happens is this action potential causes the release of the acetylcholine which eventually leads to the opening of the sodium channels and another action potential causes the calcium release here or here and there were six processes that causes the muscle contraction. Now for the neuromuscular blockers what happens is that this these neuromuscular blocking agents act on here like nicotine nicotine nicotinic acetylcholine receptors here are the nicotinic receptors when acetylcholine binds to it and the process goes on so neuromuscular blocking agents block this this receptor and are divided into two groups that is the non depolarizing agents and the depolarizing ones for the non depolarizing agents these are the competitive antagonists they bind to the acetylcholine receptors but they do not induce the opening of the sodium ion channel means they prevent the uh, depolarization and thus inhibiting the muscle contraction the root it uh, these agents can never be absorbed through the gi hence the only option is the either the intramuscular im or intravenously im they are injected this way this has a rapid onset of action usually in two minutes first they start with paralyzing the small contracting muscles that is the eyes face hands and then the large muscles that is the neck trunk limbs and the diaphragm however the muscle recover in an opposite manner first it was paralyzing from neck trunk limbs diaphragm now in order to for the recovery first diaphragm is the one which will uh get recovered first i have an mcqs about this also so have a look as you can hear uh see here is very very 
expect to see the first return of function in skeletal muscles following discontinuation of a non debilitating neuromuscular blocking agent. Now, where would you expect to see the first return of function? Yes, the answer is diaphragm. Good. As the muscle recovers in, an, in a reverse manner, so we will first see the diaphragm to recover, to get back in shape. Now, in, in non depolarizing agents, the clinical duration, the most commonly used agents as are the this one, cystocurium, pancurium, rocurium, acracurium. These are the most commonly used agents with a clinical duration. This has the 90 minutes, 90, 40, 40, 40 minutes. What happens is this is the pan. No, no, no. For the acrocurium, it releases histamine and decrease in the blood pressure. But I think we should make it as brief as possible. So these are the most commonly used agents with their clinical duration, the root, onset, and what it usually causes, like the clinical uses. So we will move on to depolarizing agents now. For the depolarizing agents, these are resistant to degradation, like acetylcholine is receptor agonist, resistant to degradation by acetylcholine esterases. For depolarizing agents, its function is similar to that of the, like action is similar to that of the acetylcholine. These are resistant, but, 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 they are resistant to degradation by acetylcholine esterases. You know what happens in acetylcholine? It is broken down into acetate and choline. I discussed in my uh, video of, I think, the previous video of cholinoreceptors or cholinergic neurotransmission. I don't remember. But acetylcholine breaks into acetate and choline. Here, this, the depolarizing agents uh, have similar action as acetylcholine, but they are not degraded by the acetylcholine esterases. And hence, it persistently depolarizes the muscle fibers. These days, succinylcholine is the only de depolarizing fiber used. This. Now, what happens in here is that it binds to the nicotinic receptor, sodium channel opens, and depolarization takes place. As it's resistant, it leads to transient fasciculations and flaccid paralysis. This is referred to as the phase 1 block that takes place initially. Now, in the second phase, that is the phase 2 block, here the sodium channel closes. Membrane repolarizes uh, polarizes due to the continuous uh, stimulations of the succinylcholine as succinylcholine is not broken down by the acetylcholine esterases. Their continuous stimulation causes desensitization to acetylcholine and hence phase 2 block. Now this is its clinical uses are same as I have mentioned earlier about the tracheal intubation Critical, in critically ill patients and also about uh, uh, use of ventilators in uh, during respite rapid use during respiratory failure and if we talk about the root of administration of succinylcholine it is also injected intravenously and now if we move on to the adverse effect of succinylcholine it is hyperthermia apnea or no breathing hyperkalemia so here we are done with the shortest summary of the gangrenic blockers and the neuromuscular blocking agents. So I'll see you guys with the next video and if you have any suggestions based on this video or anything you can let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.